Okay. All right. All right. Well, welcome to Perfect Love Worship Center's Wednesday night Zoom Bible study. How is everybody doing this evening? Very well. Wonderful. Blessed and highly favored. Blessed and highly favored. All right. Praise the Lord. Blessed and highly favored. That's Amen. right. Amen. Amen. Well, tonight um, we're going to be uh, continuing our uh, lessons on Jesus as Lord. But before we do that, we want to, as as we are want to always do, uh, say prayer for the not only for this lesson, but for those who are have uh, any uh, needs for healing or for provision or whatever they may be. If you if you have a uh, something that you would like the group to pray for on your behalf or the behalf of someone that you know and love and uh, or uh, acquainted with. Uh, this is your opportunity to uh, share with the group so that we can join together as the family of God with you for those needs. Anyone have with a prayer request? We want to pray for Ed, our neighbor. <laughs> yes, yes. Ed, our, the neighbor for my parents. Uh, Dad, why don't you explain what happened um, recently with Ed? Okay. You, you've asked me to testify, and you know, you ask Patty, she knows that I can be very wordy. But I, I think the details are significant and important. About uh, the end of last week, Thursday, our neighbor, we know them very well, know him very well. His name is Ed Matthews. He uh, he texted me about a problem he had. Uh, the uh, neighbor behind him, his house, is selling her house, and they came over the night before with an affidavit that uh, he was supposed to sign, an affidavit from their selling attorney, uh, where it explains that uh, that the property behind him, his fence doesn't exactly line up with the property line and a good half of it is uh, encroaching a foot onto the neighbor's property. Well, Ed was uh, mystified because he put the fence up and he thought he had done it correctly. But the long story short uh, about issues like this is that uh, these affidavits simply state that he's yielding up the uh, the fence to that property owner, that part of it anyway. I don't know all the other details, but there was a short deadline to sign this, and he was very concerned about doing everything correctly and so on. And while uh, listening, after reading his text and calling and talking about it, uh, I suggested that I might have an attorney would help him, and it's an attorney I know and my boss knows uh, very responsible person in uh, Nassau County. And I called that attorney and uh, she said, fine. She gave me some details and said, fine, uh, have him call me. And uh, when I got back to Ed, the neighbor, he was so grateful that we were able to find somebody he could talk to right away because it was a very short deadline for the selling attorney. And so he called her that afternoon and uh, I didn't know how that conversation went but uh, just this Monday morning, I think it was this Monday. Yes. Maybe it was Friday. We, we walk on the on every other day, even day. Anyway, uh, we met Ed outside. And he was big smile. He was so grateful. He said everything worked out perfectly. They, they redid the wording of the affidavit. Everything is fine. Everybody's happy. Corpus said that he didn't hold up the sale of the property or anything. He was so uh, elated. And he said... He, he gave us the check for Perfect Love Worship Center, the amount that the attorney was to charge, but the attorney explained to him, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Just give the money to your favorite charity. And so <laughs> and we didn't, he came out, he knows Perfect Love Worship Center. He knows about us. I We, we just want to pray that he eventually comes and, yes. and worships with us. Yes. But uh, he, he just handed his check and was very happy. And we Lord, just praise God. Like a patella, please. What'd you say? I'm sorry. Who was that? Was that Brother Philippe? That's Brother Philippe. I missed it. Anyway, uh, very, 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 very good. Uh, we really appreciate it. Sorry about that. It's okay. Amen. We forgive you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get on with this uh, lesson. Well, that was a wonderful <laughs> testimony, and it shows how. Uh, your your uh, witness is uh, becoming more and more uh, powerful 
for Ed, and we know that God doesn't, he, there's no time restraints on how God uh, moves on people. Amen. And uh, we, we believe that, that uh, for Ed, we believe that he will come to the outreach and be saved and his life will be changed. And we're seeing the fruit of, of your witness uh, through this testimony. So God bless you. Thank Amen. you very much. Sister Alma, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I said amen. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Does anybody ha else have a prayer request? We're, so we're going to pray for Ed and, and pray that the Lord will continue to lead him to salvation. Brother Alex. Yes. Can you please uh, pray for my stomach? I'm having a lot of problems with my stomach and I'm loaded. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Sister Hope, is that you? Yes. Sister yes. Hope. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll pray for Sister Hope's stomach. Anyone else? Uh, can you continue to pray for me, uh, especially with the vaccine thing uh, they tried to put as mandatory in the hospital, please? All right, absolutely. We'll Amen. pray for you, brother. We'll pray for all the healthcare workers and teachers who are in need of support, those who are not willing right now to to give up their liberty to take a mandated vaccine shot. All right, anyone else? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's, for these needs and any other needs that, that were not mentioned, but are represented here, let's ask the Lord to uh, touch each and every one of them. He's able to, he wants to, pray, he's Father, just looking right for now, faith God, right now. So let's show right faith now, in our we Heavenly Father, Lord precious Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We worship and honor you, Lord, for this opportunity once again to gather together as your family, the family of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we, we bring these needs before you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for a mighty work in her body, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Continually moving him, Lord God, God, and allow and him Lord, to, and bless uh, him, come to draw him to place of, Lord God, draw uh, him to the outreach, Lord God, you, bring Lord him God, into your in kingdom and in submission and bless him to your blessing us, love Lord God, and your bless him your kingdom, O oh God. Pray, Lord, that you, you do not overlook things like that, Lord God, God, when somebody him, considers God, to be and is very uh, generous to your kingdom, Lord God, bless him with salvation. We're believing for miracles for him, Lord God, in Jesus' name. No. For, Hallelujah. Uh, Have your way, Lord Sister God. All our we, we bring inspired. healing. We pray healing right now in your stomach. We claim it right now in Jesus' name that you would take away the bloating and the feeling of pressure that she's feeling, Lord God. We pray that you would release that, Lord God, and allow her to be completely whole and brand new uh, physically, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, for Brother Philippe and his family uh, as they are uh, uh, working to uh, be, uh, try to get, be, get, uh, receive the exemption for the vac mandated vaccine, Lord God. We pray for them, Lord God, that you would give them success, Lord God, that you would advocate for them on their behalf, Lord, in Jesus' name, and that they would be successful in their uh, request, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would... Uh, uh, touch all uh, people who are mandated, Lord Jesus, God, that you would help them through this, Lord Jesus, God, and give them uh, confidence and to know that you are with them, Lord Jesus. Give them wisdom and, and the steps that they should take, Lord, in Jesus' name, and allow them, Lord God, to uh, to be freed from that, uh, that burden that has been placed on them, Lord God, as they uh, just want to do their jobs and, and go to work every day, Lord. And we pray that you would bless uh, this nation, Lord God. Bless your people bless suffolk county and uh bring us a peace joy and and redemption lord god to all the people in this world and yes. in our area lord we thank you and praise you in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. 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 all right god. everybody got quiet there in the middle of the prayer i was the only one praying <laughs> well praise the lord well god bless each and every one of you and tonight we're going to be continuing our Jesus is Lord series of lessons uh, for uh, Wednesday night Zoom Bible study. And I believe Sister Patty is going to be teaching us. Do I remember that correctly, Sister Patty? Yes. Terrific. All right. So go ahead, Sister Patty. We, we By the way, just want to uh, acknowledge once again, Sister Patty's work with the uh, 
Zoom and the PowerPoints that she puts oh, together no. for these Zoom lessons. Uh, we really appreciate her yes. efforts. And yes. yes. And uh, we're, 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 thank we're, you, Sister Patty. <laughs> You know, it, it, it helps it helps the the lessons to be a little more interactive and um, and interesting. Not that the content isn't interesting, but it, it allows to have that visual aid yes. um, really helps it uh, yeah. uh, become uh, ensconced in our hearts and our minds. So that we thank you and praise you. Uh, we thank you, thank you, Sister Patty. We praise you for your work that you've done. Yes. Yes, God and, uh, glory. Amen. We praise the Lord for over it's all. all for him. Amen. And it's all in him. Amen. All right. You have the call. So, just want to say, let's be grateful for Zoom because it's pouring rain. It's pouring cats and dogs. Yeah, out absolutely. There. And normally, sometimes we would have had to drive. Yeah. Through all this. I, I think of so yeah. many times we drove through this kind of weather to get to service or whatever, or Bible study. So thank God for Zoom. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. It can be nice and dry. And for some that are in their pajamas, no. <laughs> I'm um, in my PJs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is number 10 out of 11. Um, I think next week is Lord of the Harvest, which should be an interesting lesson. But I just want to say a quick prayer. I don't want to take up too much time, but just a quick prayer, because this lesson is revelation. This lesson is a revelation lesson. I didn't know that until I started putting it together. And I want to pray for that, okay? For those of us that are new, for those of us that want more revelation, this lesson is revelatory just in the nature of the Lordship of Jesus. So can we just say a quick prayer in Jesus' name? Lord, we pray in the yes, name Lord, of Jesus. Jesus. Lord, have your way in this lesson. Yes. Have your way in our minds and our hearts, Lord Jesus. Praise Lord, I pray you help us Thank get you, the Lord revelation Jesus. of who yes, you Lord are. Jesus. You are the one true God, the Jesus. only God. There is Praise no other God. Lord, we pray Thank you lose that revelation and that you would seal it into our hearts and minds, Lord God. Yes, Lord. That nothing would be yes, able to take it away. Nothing would cause Praise us to question it. Nothing, Lord God, would interfere with what you want us to no, tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so the the, uh, the uh, uh, scripture text is is pretty long. So what I'd like to do is I don't want you to listen to me. You know, remember this is interactive. Okay. So everybody has to participate. Well, not everybody has to participate. But we would love for you to participate. So um, if somebody could read, uh, there's 16 verses here. If somebody could read uh, one through uh, eight, that would be great. Thank you so much. Um, Exodus 21 to 17. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of... Oh my goodness. Bondage. Hold on. Yes, but I have the pictures of everybody in the way. Hold on. And I don't know how to get it down. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's <laughs> Out okay. of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And somebody would read, if you would read, uh, thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. Uh, if somebody would read 9 through 16. Nine All right. Okay. I thought she she stopped at 6 or? At 8. So you eight, read from 9 eight. to 16. 9 to 16, yeah. Okay, go ahead, Brother Ed. All right. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. 
For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thank you, Brother Ed. So basically, this is what? The Ten Commandments, right? Yep. The Lord wrote them with his finger on the tablets for Moses. <clears throat> and it's there forever sealed in God's word. Um, so we thank God for those 10 commandments, because really that's our basis for morality. Amen. Amen. So the word Lord is not used commonly in our speech today. We frequently use similar words such as boss, supervisor, foreman, <clears throat> excuse me, manager, overseer, director, administrator, and leader. But none of these words convey the exact meaning as the word Lord. In the scriptural sense, the word Lord describes someone who does more than just guide or advise or direct. It has deeper meaning than only supervising or managing. It is important that we truly understand what we are saying when we proclaim Jesus is Lord. And we've been doing that now for 10 weeks, right? Amen. We are making a very powerful and comprehensive statement. So what is, oh, what happened here? I don't know what happened here. Oh, wait, this is it. Here it is. So what, uh, so what is the meaning of Lord? There are several uh, different meanings in this. Uh, let me there are several different meanings in the Hebrew, Greek, and English languages. First, the word Lord has the meaning of royalty. In most ancient color, cultures and in a few remaining cultures today, to be Lord was a designation of aristocracy, aristocracy, sorry. Aristocracy, well, yeah. Yeah, mobility, nobility or royal blood. In those cultures, a lord was often someone whose family was related to the ruling king. We know that from the British. You know, many times they had lord this, lord that, you know, because they were related in some way. Lords were privileged members of the ruling class who were honored and respected because of their eminence and high birth. Secondly, the word Lord carries the meaning of rulership or authority. In ancient color, cultures, a Lord was someone who obeyed absolutely, utterly, and completely. In many societies, Lords had the power of life and death over their subjects. To disobey a Lord's order was certain death, as in Esther's king, Esther's ex. Can somebody say that? Xerxes. Hashuaris. 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 Or Xerxes, either one. Or Xerxes. Xerxes. Praise God. I said, I'm going to practice this, but I didn't get around to it. <laughs> but this was Esther's king. And everybody knows that he would hold out his scepter. And if you, he wasn't pleased with what you asked, he would put you to death. It was plain and simple. That was it. So that was in some uh, societies. A lord was not just a boss or a supervisor. He was absolute ruler, one who will and who will and dictates were not questioned or challenged. You didn't challenge the king. You didn't challenge those that were in charge. Uh, you know, you didn't ask them, why, why do you want me to do that? <laughs> Could you explain that to me? I don't quite understand. No, you just did it. Uh, a Lord is someone who has complete authority and control over another with or without the other person's consent. You didn't have to consent to it. It was just the way it was. Yeah. Praise God. And thirdly, in the Hebrew language, the word Lord carried the connotation of holiness or divinity. The Hebrews referred to their God as the Lord. His name was so holy that they would not speak it but merely referred to him as the Lord. When the Hebrews spoke of the Lord, 
they were referring to Almighty God. So who is the Lord? Could somebody read is uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4, please? Um, yeah. Uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Or in Hebrew, Shema Israel, Eloheinu Ehad, Alehenu. Yeah, uh, oh, I forgot it. Adonai. 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 There you go. There we go. Thank you. Well, on the left hand side of the screen, that was a nice try, Alex. Yeah, I know, the, right? <laughs> on I, the I, left, left a Hebrew side. taught me that. <laughs> one, of, one of my patients taught me that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So on the left hand side of the screen is the Shema in, in Hebrew. This is it right here. So, um, and we consider ourselves Shema Christians because right. we believe in the one true God, the only God. There is no other God. Praise God. So um, we thank God for that revelation. So this is the beginning of the revelation right here. When the Lord wrote in Deuteronomy, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Jews only knew one Lord. They recognized the absolute spiritual authority of only one, and that was Yahweh, God himself, which is the Shema. Jesus Christ declared himself to be that one, the absolute Lord. And that's what got the people or the Jews, you know, the Pharisees and the Sadducees all upset because he was declaring himself to be the absolute Lord. They couldn't handle that. Yeah. Praise God. But it was revelation. He was revealing himself to them. He was, you know, they were praying, Messiah come, Messiah come. And he came. Praise God. And so when Jesus uh, was tempted by Satan in the wilderness, he rebuked Satan by quoting the word of God. Can somebody read Luke 4.12? Luke 4, 12, and Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. This is an amazing, remarkable scripture. Jesus is claiming to be God here, right? Amen. He revealed himself to Satan and the world, basically, through his scripture that he is God. He is the Lord of glory. Jesus also made the claim of absolute lordship to his disciples. John 13, 13. Somebody please read. You, you call me? Call go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, you can. I'll take the next one. <laughs> uh, all right. You call me master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I am. Right there. He said, so am I, or so I am. And... Thomas received the revelation of divinity and lordship of Jesus after Jesus miraculously appeared unto him and the disciples in a closed room. So God doesn't answer our questions necessarily. He doesn't have to uh, qualify himself, but he reveals himself. Praise God. Amen. And that's what he did to all along. You're going to see how Jesus revealed himself. So, Melissa, you can read John 20, 28. Okay. Um, when it comes on the screen, it's up uh, on the oh, left. I see it. And he said unto him, my Lord and my God. Amen. Saul of Tarsus, who later became the apostle Paul, received his revelation on the road to Damascus. Again, God was revealing himself. Acts 9, 5. <clears throat> Would somebody please read? Acts 9 and 5. Wow, that's tiny. Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom thou art, who the who whom you are persecuting. And the other version, thank you, Sister Alma, is who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And his voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. So he reveals himself to, 
to Saul of Tarsus became before he became Paul. Amen. Amen. You'll see how the Lord always reveals himself in scripture because he wanted people to know who he is. He wants us to make him our Lord, right? That's what this is all about. He wants us to worship him as our Lord. Um, the apostle Peter proclaimed the great revelation in the first message that was preached after the church was born on the day of Pentecost. Acts 2.36 If somebody could please read. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So there you have it. More revelation. Uh, Karen, did you have a question? No. Oh, okay. I see your hand up. You were saying I think, hi. I think she's just saying hi. Oh, <laughs> hi, Karen. Hi, Karen. <laughs> hi, peoples. <laughs> um, so I lost my place. <laughs> okay. So to the spirit filled Christians, there is only one Lord, and that Lord is God, manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ. So, everybody, that's the revelation right there. He is one Lord. And that Lord is God manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ. Ephesians 4 or 5. Somebody? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> All right. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Praise hey, God. Thank praise you. God. There you go. Nice and strong. Yes. <laughs> so to whom is Jesus Lord? Jesus is Lord of all, whether we accept and obey his lordship or not, he is still Lord. This is an unchangeable fact. Whether we choose to acknowledge and submit to his lordship or not, he is still Lord. And someday we will either be blessed or cursed according to our response. That's why the revelation is so important. Praise God. Amen. The day will eventually come when everyone will finally acknowledge the supreme lordship of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Would somebody read Philippians 2.11, please? <clears throat> Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. And I apologize for my crackly voice tonight. I don't know what happened. Praise God. This scripture is both a joy and a sorrow. Those who truly proclaim him as Lord of their lives will someday enter into the joy of the Lord. Those who proclaim him more too late will discover the judgment and the punishment of a righteous God. And that's the burden that we're feeling today because we see the degree of unrighteousness and corruptness and sin in the world. Yeah. And you just get a little overwhelmed. Like God, you know, we were talking about that earlier with, you know, God, how, how do we, you know, how do we reach all these people? How do we, you know, but God already has a plan. He really has yeah. a plan. Amen. And, and he'll right. reveal it. There's the word reveal it. He'll reveal it to us as time goes by. So it's a process. Okay. Yes. It's a process. So those who truly proclaim him as Lord of their lives will someday enter that joy. Praise God. And we thank God for the joy of the Lord. Amen. There are many people who claim Jesus as their Lord today. However, Jesus challenges those who proclaim him as your Lord, yet still live their lives according to their own wills and desires. So when God reveals yourself, it's important that you continue in that revelation because we have to live according to his will and his desires, not our own. Praise God. I recall we heard this last week in last week's lesson that we have to do the will of God. We must be after the will of God because he is Lord of all. Yes. 
Luke 6, 46. I know the scripture is very small, but the words are a little bigger. So why do you call me Lord when you won't obey me? That's what he was speaking in, in the book of Luke to the people of that day. He, he, they would not obey him. They wouldn't follow him. They wouldn't believe. And yet they would call him Lord. He said, Lordship demands obedience. We are not accepting Jesus as our Lord until, until we obey and submit to his word and his will. Praise God. We are not being fruitful or truthful rather when we say that he is our Lord, yet we resist the teachings of the scripture and insist on living life by our own decisions and choices. And it's, I always look at it this way. It's a very fine line, you know, when, especially when you know somebody for many, many years and suddenly they make a decision and you're kind of taken back by their decision. I mean, and you wonder, are they really doing God's will? You know, but even on a personal level, when we make our decisions, it's important for us that we know God's will, that we seek his face until we find his will, that we just don't jump into decisions and doing things. Unless God tells you to do something right away, then you have to obey him. But for the most part, we wait upon the Lord. Yes. And, uh, it's important that that's the, th the basis of our decisions and the choices that we make. This is the question that we must all continually ask ourselves. Am I submitting every area of my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? I think if we're all honest, we would have to say no <laughs> yeah. because it's a process. It's a process. We try our best right now. We're, we're doing our best. We're, we're living for God. We're doing the most we can do. We want to help people. You know, we're, we're praying. We're, we're getting a hold of the word of God. We're being faithful to services. But still, all in all, it's a process. There are things in us that, you know, God can't change it all at once. We'd fall apart. <laughs> yeah. So in his gentleness and his kindness and his, and his loving ways, he leads us and he guides us. And that's why every decision we make is so important. And I remember, this is minor, but I was going to move out to the East End and I had been renting and I was single. So, you know, I was more giving in a sense because, you know, I was able to do that. And I remember deciding to move to the East End and I was going to get a different place, maybe a house even to live. So I went to my uh, bishop, our pastor at the time, Bishop David, <laughs> and I said to him, you know, I just wanted to discuss with you. Now he can't tell me what to do. Okay. In that sense, but he can guide my decisions and, and with wisdom and understanding. And I said to him, I, I, I just want to let you know, I'm not going to be giving as much anymore because I'm going to be buying a house <laughs> and, you know, I just won't have that extra income. And, you know, he looked right at me and he goes, whatever you do, he goes, I know that you'll pray about it and you'll do the right thing. And so that's important. That's important that God knows us that way. All right. Yeah. You know, we talk about God knowing us, it's important that he knows us in those decisions that we make. That's how God gets to know us and how we get to know him. Praise God. Amen. So after you bought the house, you stiff the Lord? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a covering, right? Amen. <laughs> um, that's why Melissa moved in with me. So it was a little cheaper. There you go. Lord. <laughs> yep. So uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 3, it's small in the, you know, the verse is small, but you can read the words, I think, right? Under the word Jesus. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That Amen. tells you right there, you've got to have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You've Amen. got to have the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The Holy Ghost is 
it takes the power of the Holy Ghost living within us to truly proclaim, proclaim that Jesus as our Lord, but to genuine and to genuinely surrender to his Lordship. You know, without the Holy Ghost, you don't have that ability to surrender so much. You yeah. might surrender today and not tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you might surrender for a month and then fall out, you know, after a month. But the Holy Ghost is what helps us to do things by his power, by his grace and through prayer. We can submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ through the Holy Ghost, which gives us the power to live the life that he has called us to live. He has called us to live a, a wonderful life. Praise God. Amen. Um, Amen. Acts 1 and 8. All right. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That tells you right there, the Holy Ghost is power. If you've got the Holy Ghost in you, you've got power. You've got That's the power right. of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for that Holy Ghost. We thank you for the miracle yes. of the Holy Ghost. We pray that you fill every family that's associated thank with this Lord. Bible study with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our neighbors, Amen. Our workers, Amen. everybody in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise Lord. God. Um, we cannot choose whether or not Jesus is Lord, regardless of what we do or say. He is Lord. <laughs> he is Lord, whether we say it or not. He's Lord of all heaven and earth. He's the Lord of the universe. Amen. We need a night out where we can just go out and look at the stars upstate, you know, <laughs> with the galaxy and everything, the Milky yeah. Way. Amen. And when you see something like that, or you like Ed and I just did a trip through the national parks and you get to see a painted desert. Huh. A painted desert. God painted the desert. <laughs> I found that so astounding. You know, I had heard about it, but to see it, it just gave me the chills. Praise God. Amen. So he is Lord of the universe. We can choose. We can choose. We can. Remember, we cannot choose whether or not Jesus is Lord, but right. we can choose whether or not we will obey his authority right. and enjoy the blessings. How do you obey God? Just following his word. That's right. When God, when you read his word, God's speaking to you and, and with wisdom and faith and understanding, you know, we follow the word of God. That's, that's his word to us. And so we can choose whether or not we will obey his authority and enjoy the blessings that come from being in submission to his lordship. Yes. Jesus is Lord. Praise God. I think I skipped a, uh, but we must determine in our hearts today whether or not he is our Lord. Amen. Yes. So this, I feel to share this scripture. Uh, I felt it like a week ago or so, and I wrote it in the lesson. So I'm going to share it at the end here, and then we'll do the discussion questions. Would somebody read this, please? I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. Claim this scripture, write it down, or just read it in the Bible and claim Amen. it. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And this one's a little lengthier, if somebody would like to read. We're going to end. This is the last scripture, and then we'll do the discussion questions. I'll read it. Go ahead, Alex. Thanks. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. 
Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Let the potsherd shrive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, What maketh thou? Or thy work? He hath no hands. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman, What hast thou brought forth? Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands, command ye, him, command ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. Amen. Amen. So he is Lord. He is Lord. He is sovereign. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I love reading scriptures like that because it reminds you of our God and who he is. Praise God. All right. So we're going to do the discussion questions real quickly because we're uh, on time. Praise the Lord. Somehow we did that. I don't know. how. (laughs) (laughs) So question number one. And, you know, don't everybody answer it once. No, I'm kidding. Explain what the Lord, uh, what the word Lord truly means and tell how it is different from the words such as boss, manager, supervisor, or director. <laughs> He's, he is the preeminent one. Um, he's the one who created like that scripture he created all of these things and therefore he has the final say on anything and everything amen amen and his, his authority is unmatched there is nothing that he has no opposite satan amen. isn't his opposite satan was created by god amen. as an angel um so there he there is absolutely nothing that uh can stand in his way if he does not if he declares something it it, it must be it it will always be amen so that's no and also brother alex those words are not sufficient yeah exactly <laughs> they, they are really nothing yeah <laughs> those words in terms of our lord yeah. praise god thank you for that explanation um discuss how we know that jesus christ is the lord well the bible says so <laughs> amen that's a good answer <laughs> You get three stars for that. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. I like, I, I tell you, I wish I had Patty as my teacher a long time ago. <laughs> He's saying that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So discuss how we know that Jesus Christ is Lord. I think, yeah, the scriptures tell us so. Yeah. Praise God. And he controls the universe. I mean, uh-huh. he controls life. He controls everything. So what role does the Holy Ghost play in our submission to Jesus Christ and his Lordship? Well, without the Holy Ghost, you can't, you won't be able to truly um, put Jesus as Lord. Um, You know, without a relationship with God, it's impossible for us in our flesh to put Jesus as Lord. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. We are, and it's also the power, the power of God. Hallelujah. To submit to him. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Sister Melissa. So in our scripture text, we read the Ten Commandments. How many of our kids know the Ten Commandments? <laughs> All I could think of was when I was, a, you know, a Sunday school, uh, not Sunday, it was a Thursday night class, right? We did that for 30, 33 years. And I used to have these little cards to give to the kids to memorize the Ten Commandments. It was amazing how many kids didn't know the Ten Commandments. They just didn't wow. know them. So, so knowing the Ten Commandments, we read them in the beginning. How does God have the right to dictate these commandments to us and tell us how to live. Because he's, oh, Go ahead, Brother Philippe. Because, <laughs> because he's our Lord. And uh, as he said in one of those verses, which I don't remember exactly where it is, he does say, uh, without him, we are nothing and we mm-hmm. cannot do anything. 
Amen. Amen. And Amen. also, it says everything in these Ten Commandments. I mean, he tells us exactly how to live. That's why it's important for our kids and our youth to know these. Because yeah. once they learn these, it's a guide inside of them. At least these 10 things, you know, you know, don't kill, <laughs> don't mm -hmm. steal, <laughs> love your neighbor, you know, and all that. Um, I, I remember I had a friend, I, I just failed to show this because remember the discussion question, I'll bring it back, was, uh, how does God have the right to dictate these commandments to us and tell us how to live? <clears throat> like brother Philippe said, he's everything. He's, he's the Lord of everything. He has every right to tell us what to do. He created everything and we are his servants, but there are some people that really don't believe that God has the right to do this. Yeah. I had a friend who came to God. She got the Holy ghost. She got baptized I didn't see her for like many years. And then I finally got to meet up with her and said, you know, what happened? And, you know, we got to really talk and, you know, she wasn't in the right frame of mind and all that, but she said this, I just didn't think that God had the right to tell me how to live. Mm. And I thought, Oh, I think that's blasphemous. I'm not <laughs> sure. But um, yeah, it's a little scary that people yeah. actually believe that, you know, but thanks be unto God. You know, we know the word of God and all of us that are here, you know, we want God to tell us how to live. Amen. We have to be so, careful, though, too. There are people who profess to be Christians and profess the and claim the lordship of Christ and that he should have preeminence and uh, the ability to dictate to them what they should do. And yet they refuse certain areas of their life to Amen. give them that over to, to Christ. And I'm not sure which is the scariest place to be in the one where you're openly defiant or the one where you think that you're compliant. Okay. <laughs> okay but yet you yeah. are not. <laughs> right. So beware of self-delusion. Well, I, I heard this recently and I'll share it because I think it's so important. Check your motives. Yeah check your motives every day, you know, like repent every day and ask God to check you and ask him to check you that if there's something in you, that's not right. He'll show you. Yeah. Amen. And, um, and God will, especially as you get, as God begins to use you more and more, you know, you'll be challenged, <laughs> yeah. you know, you'll be challenged because he, he wants you to, to check and make sure that you're right, that your motives are right, that your heart is right. You know, like we're at the outreach and, you know, when Alex named it Perfect Love Worship Center, well, that said a lot. I mean, okay, we better have perfect love. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if anybody comes in that place. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we, yeah, that's true. I, I, yeah, it's about his perfect love. But yeah, we should be shining out that perfect love as well. That should be Amen. a challenge for Amen. us. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so how can we? We know that we are truly under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's our last question. Mm. A good question. Yeah. I truly believe, I think that's one of his words said, uh, the, the uh, tree shall bear fruit. Ah, yeah. yes. That's, that's right. Otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go ahead, Patty. Well, otherwise he'll curse the tree. You know, the, yeah. he said if, they, if he comes and the, the branch has no fruit, then he'll curse it. Yeah. And the, um, and the word says you shall know them by their fruits. Yes. If they, yeah. Whether they be, you know, truly uh, under the lordship of, of Jesus Christ. Yes. It'll reflect in their actions, behaviors, their speech. Yeah. So the last thing that I had said, well, what, close to the last, it wasn't really less. It said, there are many people who claim Jesus as their Lord today. However, Jesus challenges those who proclaim him as Lord, yet still live their lives according to their own wills, which is what you just mentioned, um, Alex. But the Lord challenges them. The Lord, you know, the Lord, because judgment is on the other side of that. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. So, the Lord is 
the Lord of all. He is. And whether we choose him or not, remember, he is still Lord of all. Amen. Amen. So did anybody have a question or anything you wanted to mention? Anything? Anybody? I'll bring us back. <laughs> okay. Praise God. Well, Brother Alex. All right. Thank you so much, Sister Patty, uh, for that wonderful lesson. And it's uh, very sobering. And I, and what you said at the beginning was that it's, it's about revelation. Um, that's so true that, you know, revelation, it means the revealing. And when Jesus Christ is truly revealed to us for who he is, I mean, the, we have a popular um, understanding of him through culture, uh, through family and, and personal contacts with people who are Christian and, um, or may not even be Christian, have, have an interest in, in, in the historical Jesus or something like that. But when you really dig down into the word of God and you begin to study what is meant when, when all those times where it says Jesus is Lord and, and, and he is Lord, it's very sobering. And it, and it should cause us to be wanting to um, submit ourselves to him and, and be obedient to him and, instead of trying to do things our own way. And, and, you know, it's so easy for us in our, in our flesh, in our carnal nature to want to just do what we want to do. We're like, you know, uh, teenagers, you know, teenagers like to have their freedom and, and you know, don't want to feel encumbered by their parents but their parents realize that those the, the, the safety and and the and 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 the growth of that child the maturing process for that child that teenager um, relies on their submitting to the and obeying authority. to the parent the authority of their yeah. parents yeah um, because uh, the parents understand what the world is all about, even though the child thinks that they already know, you know, uh, you know, I, I know more about my, about the world than my parents ever knew, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then, but then when they get to in their thirties and forties, they realize, oh my goodness. Yeah. My parents really were so wise. <laughs> uh, I, th I think a lot of people are going to realize, you know, one day that what they thought was that they were being so wise and that they knew it all. And they understood the world they're going to realize oh my goodness i did not know the half of it god is god understood all along and i and i didn't submit myself to him and that's that's a dangerous place to be in yes. all right so let's let's pray and ask the lord to go with us as we separate uh and and uh go our separate ways and uh await the next time we're able to meet together uh, and ask god to be with us and to Bless us and let his word sink into our hearts and our minds and our spirits and, and lead and guide us through the rest of this week.